Hi right, guys, thank you for joining me once again today. Today, I just want to simply talk about um, our former president, Buloka Bele Jonathan. The reason why I want to talk about him and I want to talk about, I want us to remind ourselves of what happened when he was president was is simply because there is this news going, out, going around that he's going to run again for president next year. And um, I think it's important for us, for all of us, to have this conversation of what happened when he was president. Not just what happened, but in my own opinion, the, the, the amount of corrupt activities that went on under Guloka Bele Jonathan. Now, before I continue, I have to say this. My analysis of Jonathan does not abdicate responsibility on behalf of Buhari or other presidents before Jonathan. For me, for just this video, I just want to analyze Jonathan's leadership under the guise of the issue of corruption. Now, obviously, we've had corrupt leaders before Jonathan. We've had corrupt leaders after Jonathan and the person of Buhari. However, like I said, the context for this discussion is because he wants to, apparently, the rumors is that he might be running again. And I feel like it's important for us, like I said, to remind ourselves of all the things that happened. If you remember, Jonathan ran for re-election in 2015 and he lost. The reason why he lost was obviously because of insecurity, because of um, obviously Boko Haram, the Chibo girls, for example, and lots of other issues. But one of the issues he also lost was because Nigerians who were tired of the amount of corrupt activity that were, going on, that were happening under him we were kind of disillusioned and we wanted change. Yes, obviously, the change that we wanted is not the change that, that we have. Obviously, things have gotten worse. And, I like, and like I said, I'm not excusing Buhari. I'm not excusing people before Jonathan. I'm just saying for the purpose of this video, I just want to remind us, or I want us to remind ourselves of all the corrupt activities, illicit activities that went on under Jonathan. The first of them that I would like to point out is obviously if you remember the minister of petroleum mrs alison madweke she she and her cronies stole three billion dollars i want to i want to i want to write this out in let me write this out in black and see if it will make sense Right, I just want to give us figures three billion. This is what Mrs. Alison Madwaker stole. Alison Madwaker up to today, she's not been brought to justice, she's not, she's not had to answer for all this money that she stole. She stole this money together with, um, allegedly, she, stole, she allegedly stole this money together with Kola and Luko and um, Mr. Mr. Jide Omokore. I just want to make sure this is videoing as well. Right? So $3 billion, Alison Madweke. Alison Madweke. Now I'm going to come, at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you why this is important. While I think it's important that we hold these guys to account, we're not, we, we can't just let Alice Madweke and Co. steal $3 billion and go scot free, right? Another, another money is um, Dasuki Gates of $2.5 billion. Again, my friends, we're not talking of $2.5 billion naira. We're not talking of $2.5 billion. CDs or whatever. We're talking of 2.5 billion dollars. I think it's important for us to know the difference because it makes a lot of difference. So Sambo Dasuki was the former National Security Advisor under Jonathan. Dasuki gets basically is he was given or under his job as the NSA. He had $2.5 billion to use to buy arms. So, if you remember, the context of this discussion was 
we are fighting Boko Haram, right? Shibogas was happening. Um, if you remember, the United Nations and Abuja got just got bombed. Lots of insecurity all over Nigeria. Most, 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 most especially in, in the north, northern part of Nigeria, right? Two point five billion dollars was meant to buy the arms that we are gonna need to fight Boko Haram. Rather than using that money, this money to buy the arms of Boko Haram, the money was used by Sambo Dasuki. Whether for election, for personal reasons, whatsoever. The point is that he stole two point five billion dollars. Again, people lost their lives fighting Boko Haram. Our fellow countrymen and women lost their lives. Army officers, military men, civilians, people, many people died. Obviously, Shibok happened, right? All because of the failure. All because the money that would have been used by our military, our fellow countrymen and women to fight Boko Haram was stolen by this one single person. Another money I want to mention again is. 289 million dollars. I'm just gonna clean this out and to write this properly. So it's bold. 289 million dollars. Remember, all this is under Jonathan, right? So you have three billion dollars, two point five billion dollars, two hundred and eighty-nine million dollars. This money, 299 million, was from what we call a joint venture cash call account of the NMPC. So again, this money again from NMPC under Alex Mad Working. I don't want to bore you with details, right? So many details, but I just want to point out figures, you know. Just the reason again, I'm gonna at the end of the day, I'm gonna tell you why it's important, right? 3 billion, 2.5, 289 million dollars. This one again is this one is in Naira, right? Seventy billion Naira. Seventy billion. I'm just gonna write here NMPC. Just so we know what where the money came from. Seventy billion Naira from the National Treasury. Now again, I just want to say this because I know people might come for me and say, no, boo, blah, 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 we want Jonathan back, Buhari is back, this and that. Again, I'm not saying, I'm not saying, I know, I know I'm saying this again. I'm not saying that Buhari is not corrupt. I'm not saying that others before Jonathan, IBB, OBJ, Yara Dua, um, Abasha, so, so and so. I'm not saying they weren't corrupt. My point is this, in the context of the discussion, all this, and it's, it's, I mean, when it comes to corruption, I, I, I would, I would always say that it's most likely that they stole more than what is being reported, right? So if they, if they say they stole three billion, they might have stolen three point one billion or three point two billion dollars, right? So this is seventy million, seventy billion naira. This is naira, not 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 dollars. Not that it makes a lot of difference, but you know, naira or, or, or dollars. The point is that this money was stolen. Now and again, on you have another sixty billion naira. I think this is this is quite small. So sixty billion, right? This sixty billion ended up in the hands of PDP members. So the money, 60 billion, it ended up in the hands of PDP members. I would not say ended up in PDP, ended up in PDP. Right, 60 billion naira. Another money again is 1.5 billion naira. Another one is 10 billion naira. So 1.5 billion. 1.5 billion right another one is 
10 billion naira. I'm just gonna make sure this is video. Yeah, that's correct. So you have you have a government, right? A government that should care for you and I, a government that should use this money to look after us, you know, to build those hospitals, schools, good roads. Under Jonathan, under good luck Ebene Jonathan, you have all of this. And like I said in the video, it's always good to assume that more was stolen. So we are saying that 1.5 billion dollar was stolen here, perhaps two billion dollar was stolen. If they are saying three billion dollars, perhaps Alice and Madwe can stole 3.2, allegedly, right? So this is just the ones that I just did a little bit of research. You can go on Google and look 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 this up. It was widely reported when another was president that people were stealing money, money was flowing around, and then PC became private banks also for some people. Um, you know, and then coming to the issue, why why is this important? Like, right? Like I said, Nigeria, we have so many resources. We are, we are so blessed with numerous resources, right? Oil, gas, human resources as well. We have so many smart people, medical doctors, engineers, and so forth and so on. In a country where you have this amount of monies, three billion dollars, two point five billion. 289 million, 70 billion, 60 billion. This is these are these are these are big sums of money. We shouldn't be like where we are as a country, right? We shouldn't be in the doldrums. We shouldn't be we shouldn't be that's on the precipice of, of being a failed state in, in, in Nigeria. We should have good roads, we should have better hospitals. So what I did was having having looked at this, right? Having looked at this. And hopefully I'm gonna take it, we're gonna we're gonna get a picture of this, right? I wanna I wanna compare. I want to compare and contrast. I just wanna compare and show you something. So remember, like I said, Alice and Madweke and Co. three billion dollars. That's what that's what she allegedly stole. In the UK. There's a hospital called Adam Brooks Hospital in, in Cambridge. It cost them 85 million pounds to build it. 85 million to build Adam Brooks Hospital. So let me just say a hospital here. All right? Royal Purport, another hospital. It was it costs 200 million pounds to build. Royal Purports. The third one, University of Texas in America. University of Texas Southwestern Hospital. It costs 800 million dollars to build it. Hundred million dollars. I'm just gonna write here U of T. So University of Texas Southwestern Hospital was built with eight hundred million dollars. Karolinska in in Sweden. It cost them one billion dollars to build. One billion. Karolinska. Right now, the average cost of building a hospital, if you just go on Google, do your research. The average cost of building a hospital, world class, brand new hospital, 100 million dollars. That's the average cost. I'm using hospital here because I just want to I wanna show you what happens. In a country where you have that amount of money being stolen, this is what we are being deprived. Well, this is what we are being deprived of. We are being deprived of the ability to have world class hospitals. We are being deprived of the ability to have world class schools, universities, 
I mean, go to our universities in Nigeria. Some of them, the roofs are leaking. You know, it's this is pale in comparison, right? That's why you have someone like Jagaban, who calls himself Jagaban, right? Tinibu, he leaves Lagos State and goes to UK and comes to UK for medical treatments. The reason being that he doesn't have any trust in all the in all the hospitals in Lagos. Tinibu lacks trust in them that he would have the, will I say, the guts to fly out from Nigeria and come to the UK for medical treatments. So that tells you that when he becomes president, if he wins the PD, the APC ticket, right, honorary ticket, we're going to have Buhari 2.0. We're going to have someone that, you know, comes to the UK for medical treatment. We're going to have the same medical tourism. And rather than our leaders building us hospitals like this, we have Alice Madoka stealing 3 billion. We have um, the Suki Gate of 2.5, you know, so forth and so on. So let's say, for example, the three billion dollars from for Madweke, that would have built us. So hundred, that would have built us thirty hospitals in each of the states of Nigeria. So if you if you use this average figure, right, hundred million dollars. Again, Alice Madweke stole three point three billion, right? So I'll just I will say here, Madweke. I don't think that's that's so clear. So I'll just say the mad work here. Mad work here. Three billion. So if we would have taken these three billion dollars, right? Average cost of a hospital in, in, in the Obrin being a hospital is $100 million. This would have built us, this morning from Adweke, would have built us 30, 30 world class hospitals in Nigeria. At least, these figures could be less, it could be more, but my point is, at least you would have, have, you would have had a situation whereby average people like you and I, average man and woman, can go to a hospital and not be scared of the lights going off, will not be scared of not having doctors, doctors on strike and so forth and so on. This is the cost of corruption. The cost of corruption is that Nigerians are left without good hospitals, they are left without good roads, they are left without good schools, they are left without electricity, they are left, you know, so many reasons, you know, so many things that the money that I just talked about now, that were looted under Jonathan, it would have been used to do so this and many more for us. You know, so in conclusion, right? I know you may ask me why are you doing this. And like I said, you and I, you and I may disagree. People or people have been saying that um, we want Jonathan to come back, Buhari is bad. And like I said, I'm not saying that like I'm not saying that Buhari is not bad. My point is that yes, of course, Buhari is bad. However, what we cannot do as Nigerians, we cannot abdicate responsibility on behalf of Jonathan. Jonathan messed up. Jonathan, Jonathan was a bad, detrimental leader to Nigeria. In many reasons, in many circumstances, he was weak. Because of his weakness, Madoke could loot $3 billion. Dasuki could loot $2.5 billion. That, be, that's, that, that's, that, that, that cannot happen if you have a leader that knows what he or, he or she is doing. So my point is, in conclusion, I hope he doesn't come back to run again. I hope we can do away with the lives of Jonathan, Buhari, Abasha, IBB. I hope we can do away with those leaders. And I hope that as a country, we can start a new page, a new page of inc incorruptibility, a new page of transparency, a new page of accountability, a new page of leaders that are passionate and that want to do well. People that will build us hospitals like this, that will use the money that was stolen, or that will generate more new sources of income. And build us hospitals, build us good roads, right? So, I'm gonna make a promise to you when, when Buhari leaves, I'll do my own research again. I'm gonna come back to you, and I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do more videos like this where I'll, I'll, I'll you know, write down so that you can see the figures by yourself, so that you can see the monies that this guy stole, whether it's Abasha, whether it's IBB, whether it's um, Buhari when he finishes next year, whether it's um, OBJ. Uh, 
and so forth and so on, right? Whether it's Atiku as well when he was VP, you know. So if you like this video, if you don't, if you, I hope maybe probably it might be a bit controversial for you. Um, let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you, if you think Jonathan was a good leader, he wasn't corrupt, let me know. If you think um, he was corrupt, please let me know as well. Um, if you like the video, share it with your friends, please like it. And please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for listening.